This man is an incarnation of the devil. If you want to see what pure evil looks like, this face comes close. His name is Andrew J. Wakefield, a British former surgeon who cemented the anti-vax movement. This is the story of what he did. We'll also take a look at how this anti-vax movement is growing stronger in India as well with Tane Dumal, whom I understand some of you are fans of. He does politics and current affairs topics on his channel. So make sure you go check that out after you watch this video. I hope you'll enjoy this. Movements against vaccines or anti-vax movements have existed right from the time vaccines have existed. When Edward Jenner introduced the first vaccine in 1798, developed using the mild cowpox virus, which could grant immunity against the deadly smallpox virus, there were many groups that were against this idea. There were people that alleged that vaccines could cause deformities. There were religious groups that argued that disease was like a punishment from God. So any attempt to intervene or prevent it was sinful. French groups like these existed for a long time, making baseless arguments with weak or no evidence until Andrew Wakefield came along. He was a liver transplant surgeon at the Royal Free Hospital in London and in 1998, he was the main author of a study published in the Lancet Journal, a paper that talked about a possible link between the MMR vaccine and autism, a paper that has since been retracted. This is the story of that study and the devastating impact it had on vaccination rates all over the world. In the study, he reported an examination of 12 children that came into the hospital routinely. He noticed that the children had developmental problems, mainly autism. And as per the recollection of the parents of the patients, the symptoms started showing right around the time they took the MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine. There was a lot more in that paper, but mainly he concluded that the MMR vaccine could possibly cause inflammation in the guts in the intestines of children leading to a protein that could leak from the gut go to the brain and cause autism now what is autism autism is a developmental disorder that causes difficulty in social interaction communication and everyday activities at the same time autism can heighten certain mathematical and creative abilities the cause of autism is not really known now, when this paper came out, you can imagine the kind of stir it caused among parents. The parents who were looking for a reason for their child's autism began blaming the vaccines. Vaccination rates plummeted across Europe and later other parts of the world. In addition, the scientific community was also taken aback because here was possible new evidence against vaccines that warranted further study. And thus began this venture to find out more about this association between vaccines and autism, such as this study done in the UK and this study done in Canada and the US and Denmark and Finland and many more such studies were done over the next few years. There were studies that followed something like 1.8 million children to see if vaccination rates had any uh, correlation with autism rates and no such link was found. We knew for sure that vaccines did not cause autism. So all of this brought the Wakefield study into question and this is where things get interesting. In 2004, that's six years after the Wakefield study, 10 of the 13 authors of that study retracted their conclusions. Now, this was a very odd thing for a study because people don't usually back out of what they said. So because of all of what happened, an investigative journalist called Brian Deere began looking into this stuff and what he found was pretty shocking. In 1996, a group of lawyers that wanted to sue the vaccine manufacturer of the MMR vaccine paid Wakefield 400,000 British pounds to do the study that showed that the vaccine was potentially unsafe. If that wasn't bad enough, in 1997, that's one year before the study was published, Wakefield patented 
an alternative to the MMR vaccine and stood to profit if the vaccine's uh, reputation was damaged. These were huge conflicts of interest that Wakefield never mentioned during the course of the study. Following another investigation by the General Medical Council where they found that he had picked his patients that the lawyers had put him in touch with so they were not random like he claimed in the study and he was medically negligent uh, by performing three lumbar punctures that's a painful procedure involving a needle in the back on three kids that did not need them so that was medically inappropriate also he was a surgeon not a pediatrician so he had no business treating kids with no training in pediatrics so this was unethical so with all this evidence in hand the board stripped him of his medical license in 2010 but the damage had already been done the initial Wakefield study had caused so much panic among parents and this happened at the same time as the growth of social media so if a genuinely concerned parent went on the internet to get information they would find these groups of misinformed parents who would scare them into not vaccinating their kids and once this fear biases a person, it's very hard for them to see what's genuinely true. This is because humans have a tendency to avoid risk more than seek benefit. It's called negativity bias. You whisper danger in a crowd and that's bound to cause more panic that you can't stop no matter how much you shout that it's safe. The same way, showing people evidence of the truth is nowhere near enough to kill this fear of vaccines once it's been put in them. There have been many attempts to educate people about vaccines to little avail. This is what happened to people all over the world, all thanks to the Wakefield study. Now, what did Wakefield do after he was no longer a doctor? Well, he made the problem worse. But before I tell you what happened here, the anti-vax movement is not just a European problem, it's rearing up its ugly head close to home as well. Here's Tanay telling you about how this anti-vax movement is taking form here in India. Anti-vax hasn't been a big trend in India like in the West, but sure it has started to grow in India quite a lot, where you see a lot of people come and speak up against vaccines. Before we get to the Indian aspect, we need to understand how big is the influence of anti-vaxxers in the world. According to a report by Center for Monitoring Digital Hate, 7.8 million people have started following social media accounts held by so-called anti-vaxxers since 2019. 31 million follow anti-vaccine groups on Facebook, 17 million subscribe to similar accounts on YouTube, 1 billion dollars in annual revenues for social media firms have earned from the anti-vax movement. So this big is the influence of anti-vaxxers throughout the world. Now let's come to the Indian aspect and let's start with Biswaroop Roy Chaudhary. He was a failed actor so he thought some pseudoscience will get him some popularity. So he started gaining a lot of popularity in the COVID-19 pandemic where he says that COVID-19 is a scam and it's a business for all these doctors and all and COVID-19 doesn't exist itself. He says COVID-19 is just a normal flu and that vaccines have never proven to be effective. He just declared it. He says that the COVID-19 vaccine is for population control. And he further goes on to say, if anyone influences you to take vaccine, he is part of a group that wants to end your life and property. Save yourself and your loved ones. He thinks that people are a part of a group. Some Illuminati shit is going on. Just run away from them. Ray. Don't get into these gimmicks. He has said that he hasn't given a vaccine to his daughter. And one vaccine was given to her, which was BCG vaccine, which was given without his permission. So you are an anti-vaxxer. You get your children also involved in this nonsense. Continue this trend. He surely doesn't understand science and the data behind vaccination and how in India itself, polio was eradicated using vaccination. Their claims have absolutely no scientific backing and they just go on to make big, big claims. But the sad part is that the people believe these claims. Unlike Europe and the US where the anti-vaccine lobby is big, powerful and organized, there are splinter interest groups in India who discredit vaccines mostly due to religious beliefs or their interest in alternative medicine. A lot of homeopaths and naturopaths are behind this anti-vaccine rhetoric. Since you already know the reality of homeopathy, which I think Pranav has explained in his videos, 
so these people want to discredit vaccines to sell their own product they'll always discredit them and sell their own thing to you now let's come to another part correlation is causation you might have seen this graph float around the whole of social media where two lines are there one is active cases in india and the vaccination done in india so as you can see the graph you can see whenever the vaccination increases the active cases increase and whenever vaccination reduces you know active cases also reduce so they are trying to prove that you know vaccination is ca causing covid which is absolutely ridiculous when you look at the graph it makes a lot of sense but correlation is not always causation i would like to give two examples as you can see in the graph over here the number of people who have died by falling into a pool correlates with the number of films nicolas cage appeared in so as you can see the graph properly correlates but correlation is not causation you know you can't it's ridiculous you can't mix these two up obviously so it correlates but is it backed by any logic no it's not second example in this graph you can see the age of miss america correlates with murders by steam hot vapors and hot objects they again correlate with each other but you can't relate these two it's ridiculous obviously so anti vaxxers will try to you know get such weird theories in front of you and try to prove a fact to you which is not true so in india this is how anti vax movements go around you see various posts on social media against vaccines but usually they are deleted by like facebook youtube or something but on whatsapp it can't be deleted so it is circulated widely on whatsapp so whenever you come across such claims make sure you debunk them show the people what is the reality of vaccines because as pranav explained in his videos how vaccinations work and how important it is to save one's life these anti vaxxers have absolutely no scientific backing but their claims are extremely huge and they gain a lot of pace because people in general like conspiracy theories now back to pranav thanks tani let's get back to the wakefield story and this is why i assert he's pure evil right after he was stripped of his medical license he didn't go quietly out of the public eye in embarrassment he did quite the opposite he became an activist campaigning against the safety of using vaccines he's active to this day giving further credence to the myth that vaccines cause autism further dropping vaccination rates all over the world causing once controlled diseases like measles and whooping cough to start resurfacing through communities no single individual has been as much of a health risk to humanity as a whole as this guy has good health is a privilege the only reason why movements like anti vax exists is because people have not seen diseases like smallpox and polio for so long that they begin thinking that this kind of uh, healthy existence is possible in the absence of vaccines this is only amplified by the mixed messages we get on social media thanks to anti vax groups and this privilege has existed for longer in the more developed parts of the world leading to more anti vax movements here and the more you tell people logically why vaccines are not harmful show them evidence that it's actually helpful to them the more suspicious they get thinking that you're trying to hide the truth from them this is actually a feature of all conspiracy theories anyway my point is that if you have any questions in mind all i say to you is be skeptical sure but also be reasonable i want to thank tanay for helping me make this video make sure you check out the video we did on his channel make sure you check out his content i'm sure you'll like it with that said i'll see you in the next one till then remember science is dope Thank you.